Today we're going to calibrate a 6000 series air seeder with an X30 monitor. The first thing we want to do is we want to set our calibration motor speed. To set the calibration motor speed we're going to need a 3 8 flat wrench and we're going to adjust this needle valve here to give us our speed. You're going to need two people to do this. You'll need one person in the cab telling you faster or slower for your calibration speed and then yourself out here or someone else turning this valve. So to do that, we've got our calibration motor turned on and the hydraulics running. So I'll turn the motor on. And in our monitor right now, it's showing eight miles an hour. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen this jam nut, spin it back by hand, and then I'm just gonna slowly turn it in to slow our speed down to five miles an hour. The five miles an hour will match the manual speed that the monitor's programmed to calibrate at. Okay, so we got our speed. So now we can lock it in with the wrench. And now we can shut off our calibration motor. Next, we go to the monitor in the cab and we want to set up our product in the X30. So do we go to our operating screen and right now we're just going to calibrate tank one with the 6000 series and X30, you can calibrate all four tanks at the same time, but for this purpose, we're gonna calibrate tank one. So up at the top of the screen here, we're gonna to touch on the product. The product that we have entered is wheat. If we want to change our product, we hit product name. We wanna make sure that we have a rate increment in the monitor. We wanna have our preset rate one. That's gonna be our target seating rate, the one that's gonna be primarily being seated at. We can have a second preset. It's gonna tell us what our calibration factor for this product is with the metering auger in this tank. And it's gonna tell us the density of the product that we can enter in there. So once you have something in all those boxes, you can hit the check box in the bottom right corner of this screen. And now we know that our wheat is in there. Make sure that your preset rate one is in the requested rate box. If it's not, Hit the preset rate one button to change it to that preset. Now we have our 50 pounds per acre set in the monitor under requested rate. So now we can touch the little wrench on the side with the sprocket, which will bring up the configuration window where we do our calibration. So you see the configuration window comes up. It's giving us our, where it says manual speed, wheel sensor, and multi-tank calibration. Multi-tank calibration is the one we want to touch to go to calibrate our wheat. It's gonna bring up another box that says calibration method. Under calibration method, you've got manual entry, automatic calibration, and automatic calibration is the one we want to select to do our calibration. Once we've selected, selected automatic calibration, it brings up a wizard that's going to walk us through step by step to doing the calibration for this product that we have in the tanks. So in step one, it's just telling you what's going on and it says to go to step two. Step two is where it has our actual uh, rate that we're going to be seeding and this is where it's going to count up the revolutions in the product. We have to have the master clutch on in order to be able to do our calibration. And one of the things you have to make special note of is if you turn the master clutch on first and then turn the, the auxiliary clutch on using the state, you will get no revolutions or estimated weight. You have to make sure that you turn on the state for the auxiliary clutch before the master. So if we turn the master off, and the state and then turn the state to green so that it is on and touch the master, we now get our revolutions and our estimated weight. Now we can go to our calibration and we'll run a calibration into a bucket to charge the metering augers.
Once our calibration or our drop tube has been pulled off the metering auger, we can put it into our calibration tube, which will guide the product into the bucket for catching. To charge the metering auger, make sure you have the augers turned on that you want to calibrate. So the, man, the auxiliary clutches, we're going to do one. So we've got tank one switch on. So now when we turn the calibration motor on, we're going to charge that product. Watch your actuator for the tanks you're calibrating for when they stop moving around. That means it's zoned in on the target rate that it wants to put on. So after the actuator stop moving around, you can stop your uh, metering auger charge and you can start with an actual calibration. So we'll change out our buckets. And we'll have to come back to the monitor and we'll have to reset it. To reset the monitor, we have to turn off the master clutch. If you turn off the master clutch, it brings up the reset button. Now our revolutions and weight have been reset to zero. We turn our master back on. And we can go back and run our calibration. So now we've got our, our empty buckets put back under the transfer lines. We're going to start the calibration by engaging the motor. You want to make sure you have a minimum of 15 pounds of product. The fuller the box is, the more accurate your calibration is going to be. We've got a good sized sample in your bucket. You can turn your calibration motor off. If you're doing multiple tanks, instead of stopping every time when your bucket gets full, you can turn that clutch off for each individual metering auger as they get full so that you can continue on your calibration to get all your buckets to the, as full as possible to make a more accurate calibration for the whole tank. So now we have our calibration sample set. So we'll grab our bucket out from underneath our tank. All the 6,000s with the next 30 are going to come with this uh, digital scale. This digital scale gives us the ability to be able to zero out the bucket so we're only weighing product. So when we turn our, buck our scale on, it's going to give you a number if you've got it zeroed out. This number will be the number that matches what's on the sides of these buckets here on this little uh, tin plate. That's the weight of the bucket. It's also going to have a little arrow that goes to the tar and that means it's the tar weight for that bucket. So now we know that our scale has been zeroed out for the bucket and we know we're just weighing product. So now we hang our scale and we can weigh what we've got. So during this calibration we've netted 26.75 pounds. So with that 26.75 pounds, we can now enter that in the monitor. So we have to turn off our master clutch in order to be able to go to the next step of our calibration. That next step of our calibration, we can enter our actual weight. Right here on this little gray box that's highlighted, touch that. And now we can enter our weight, which was 26.75 pounds. Once we have our weight entered, we hit the little green checkbox. So now we've got our estimated weight and our actual weight. Now we can press the little yellow arrow in the bottom right corner to go to the next screen. So this screen is step four or four is gonna tell us that we calibrated bin one, with our old factor of 0.123 pounds per revolution, New calibration factor of 0.126 pounds per revolution for a difference of 2.14. That's very close calibration. We've now established how much weight is being put out of that meter every time it makes full revolution. So when we start seeding, it'll adjust to put out the proper rate of product. 
So we can touch this under save, we can hit not saved, and it changed to save. Then we hit the little green checkbox, and our calibration is now complete with our new calibration factor. If you find that your calibration is way out when you're doing it uh, from your actual weight to what the estimated weight was, so your percentage is off, the second calibration should be done to verify that the calibration you've done is accurate. So we'll go through a second calibration just to make sure that our first calibration was right. So we're going to start by putting our monitor in the calibration mode. So we've already touched our little wrench with our sprocket, so our configuration window is open. I'm going to go down to multi-tank calibration. It brings up our calibration method. So I'm going to go to automatic calibration once again. It brings up our calibration wizard. Step one is just telling us again what to expect during the wizard. So we touch on the little yellow arrow on the bottom right of the screen. So we're now we're back to step two where we're physically calibrating. Because we've already charged the metering auger during our first calibration, there's no point in doing it again. We're just doing a verification. So we want to make sure that we turn our state on and then turn our master on. So now well, we've got our revs and our estimated weight. So we know that our, our motor is still going to be spinning 5 miles an hour. We'll place our bucket under our distribution tube. We've still got tank 1 turned on because that's the one we want to verify. And we're going to turn our calibration motor on. Once again, we want at least 15 pounds of product. The larger the sample, the more accurate the calibration. So we've got a decent sized sample to stop the calibration motor. Now we're going to weigh our product again. We want to make sure that our scale is turned on. and that we still have our tar weight in there. Every time you turn the scale on, you want to do a quick verification that that tar weight is in. So we're going to grab our bucket, and we want to weigh it. The weight on this calibration is 23.5. So we're going to enter that into the X30 monitor. So remember to do that, we have to turn the master clutch off which allows us to go to the next step. We get to the next step, we can go to the actual weight, touch on that, and now we can enter our weight of 23.5 pounds. So we get our 23.5, green checkbox again. So our estimated weight was 23.653. Our actual weight is 23.5, so if we touch the little yellow arrow, it takes us to our next screen, it tells us our old factor was 0.126, new factor is 1.125, for a difference of 0.69%. So we can either save that, or because we're so close, it doesn't really matter if you save it or not. I'll just save it, hit the checkbox, and our calibration is done. You'd want to make sure you do this second calibration if your product is out by more than 10 to 15 percent in order to make sure that your calibration is accurate. So now that our calibration is complete, we have all our information entered into the X30 monitor. We have to put our transfer tube from the metering auger back into the transfer line out of the calibration tube. Otherwise, we do some really nice strip seating. To do that, we just go under the tank, and we're going to pull the calibration drop tube out, put it on the transfer line, and then we're just going to lock the clamp in place. Our calibration tube is now back on. We can close the access door. Lock our wing nuts. You want to make sure with a 6000 series tank that whichever tanks you plan on seeding with are turned on back at the air seeder. If any one of these switches is turned off at the air seeder, the meter doesn't turn. This is a breaker between the circuit that's telling the auger to turn 
So you gotta make sure that they're all turned on in order to have those meters turning while you're seeding. The other thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we put the oil back to the fan. So we have to make sure if we had, if we were filling our tank at the same time, that we go to the selector valves on the right hand side of the machine and put them back to blower. And we also have to make sure that we turn this ball valve from calibration back to the fans.